being the first at anything is a big deal. Maybe you're the first one in your family to finish high school or the first one to go to uni, or you're the first person in your family to come out. Now, imagine doing that. And instead of being the first in your family, you were kind of the first in the world. And that's Josh Cavallo. More than a year ago, the Adelaide United player made sports history with this announcement. Hi everyone, it's Josh Cavallo here. There's something personal that I need to share with everyone. I'm a footballer and I'm gay. Now, not only was he the first in the A-League to come out, he became the only openly gay male footballer in a professional league in the world. In seconds, his whole life changed. And he's now one of the most vocal advocates for pride and inclusivity in sport in the world. And I'm so happy to say that he's here with me right now. Josh Cavallo, welcome to Hack. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a very nice special place in here. It's very cozy. I'm enjoying my, enjoying my time at the moment. <laughs> okay, you're feeling all right now. That's good. You know what? The day after you did the big announcement... You spoke with us on Hack. You probably don't remember. It was all a blur, I imagine. But you spoke to us and you said to us, I'm just so happy. And you said, I'm the same person that I was before. I'm just so much happier. How are you doing now? Yeah, look, it's definitely the dust has settled and it's just changed my life. It's had such a positive step on just not only my life, but a lot of people's lives around the world. And it's just phenomenal to see, you know, I got the luxury to travel overseas for the first time so on my off season last season. So um, I got to see the impact it had, you know, in London as well as in Australia. And I was just like, how do these people even know who I am? So it kind of made everything a little bit more real that it wasn't just behind a screen. My announcement was that it was a uh, real life interaction with people as well. So I'm just excited to see what the future holds with it. The DMs were stacking up, right? <laughs> like, can you give us an indication of like how quickly you were being followed, you were being messaged by yeah, people? So a little insight was the first 30 minutes I had 500,000 messages. Oh! Um, and then every 30 seconds for the next two weeks, there were 30,000 DMs coming through at a time. So Josh, that Instagram... is wild. <laughs> like, do you think about that and go... How did that happen? What's yeah, going on? It, it's crazy, but like how my nature works is I wanted to reply to every single one of them. And I was, and my manager, David said, Josh, relax. Like you're not going to get any sleep for the first three days. I was like, no, I have to reply. I have to do this. I have to reply. I have to send the thank you to them and everyone. And then it got to a point where I did get a bit too much. And like, I'm still going through the messages to this oh, no. day. It was definitely crazy, but I thank everyone for the support they did. And not only just for myself, but it paves the way for them, the next generation. And what I'm doing is great for me at the moment, yes, but it's the impact it's going to have in 10, 15, 20 years time when that next Josh is coming through. Or, you know, it could even be someone older than me that's going through the same situation right now, not necessarily in football or soccer. So that was the main message I wanted to get across. And it was a big lesson and for the world to learn that, wow, we are still a little bit behind in that way. Can you take us back to before you came out? Because I know you've said, look, I was struggling for years and people probably always ask, like, when did you realise you were gay? Like, it's just an email that you get one day and says, you're gay, That's <laughs> it, which it's not. It doesn't really work like that. <laughs> it's kind of not like that. You've obviously, it's a process. You were thinking about it for years. What was life like before you came out? Paint us a little bit of a picture there. Very hard, very difficult. I had an incredible season after signing with Adelaide United and I was had a, we had an awards night and the best young player came my way and, and I got this award and it was such an amazing award. Um, for me being at this club for a short amount of time, you know, I came midway through the season and uh, we had a seven game winning streak straight after I started playing and it just all started happening and everything went together. And to have that ro roller coaster of being homeless and then all of a sudden being one of the best in the A League and then it was just an amazing journey. And then on this awards night, yeah, I got lucky enough to win the best young player. So yeah, I was very humbled by it and I wasn't expecting it. But at the same time, you know, I spent so much time with these people and I couldn't be myself. There was times at training where we getting a drink break and the boys have banter and say oh who's your cheeky date tonight who are you going out who's your missus who's that and like I'm trying to play football here and then I have to think of making up these stories and adding it up together it was so hard to balance the two and make the story sound legit just so I can didn't want the boys to think any different of me or any less than me and you know I received this award and I was so happy but I couldn't I couldn't let it go it's like I was stuck in this hole you know I was I was had to have such a great achievement in my footballing career and then the people I shared it with the most, I was lying to them. I was lying to their face of the person who I am. 
So I was so disappointed that night, you know, that I couldn't be myself. And I said, this was my turning point. This is what has to change. You know, I went home after that night and I was crying. After winning such an achievement in your footballing journey, you're at home crying. What's going on here? So that was my turning point to me where I wanted to be myself. And then I wanted to show everyone the true Josh Cavallo. And then I came back the start of preseason, which was about six weeks later, and I made the announcement. And um, I walked into my coaches. It's a bit like this the this room here. I walked into my coaches change room and at the time our assistant coach was Ross Aloisi and he was sitting in there and I said, Ross, I want to tell you um guys something personal that's um happening to me. And like, Josh, you're all right? Like what's going on? You're not going back home to Melbourne. I said, No, 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 no. I'm not I'm good. I'm I'm happy here. Like there's no problem with that. And they go to me, Oh, what's wrong? Is it something about your mental health? And I said, No, no, no. I'm actually coming out as gay. And they're like, is that it? And I'm like, what do you mean is that it? And they're like, as long as you perform on the field and you're doing what you're doing at the moment, we couldn't be happier for you. And it's just sad that you had to hide something for so long. You know, you're with us all the time and like it's a part of you that you want to share and be happy about. Like go and be yourself, like no problem. We couldn't be happier for you. And the coach came in at the time too and I explained it to the coach and they both just gave me a big hug and said, Josh, we're so happy for you. Um, which was absolutely phenomenal. And then it gave me like the confidence I needed because it felt like I had 10, 15 kilos off my shoulders after just telling two people in the footballing world. So after that, that training session, I had the absolutely time of my life and I had the best training session I've ever had. (laughs) It was crazy. And then the next day I, you know, told the team and we had a huddle in the change rooms and everyone's like, what's going on? Like, this is crazy. And this is like such a masculine environment. Everyone was getting emotional and teary and like, it was absolutely crazy. Every single one of them gave me a hug and I really felt the love in the room. And they said, oh, we couldn't be prouder of you. We just sad that you had to hide it from us for so long. I mean, you couldn't be yourself and tell us the truth. And we can understand all the times now that you didn't want to hang out with us or you didn't want to do this. It was because you were covering your tracks, not because you didn't want to hang out with us. Well, that's the thing, right? I think a lot of young queer people are going to relate to this, that the exhaustion you talk about, it manifests itself in so many ways, right? And like you were saying, like you're constantly, you know, trying to come up with excuses or not to be in a position where someone might ask you a difficult question. And that might mean that you're isolating yourself and you're not getting the social time with your mates and stuff like that. That must have a huge impact on you mentally. And it's funny that you said, like, as soon as I came out, I had the best, you know, training session ever because it had a physical impact as well. Yeah, definitely. And that was only after telling my two coaches. So it gave me the confidence to say, wow, I really want to take the next step, tell my friends, my family, the world, like, this is me. This is who I am. Can you imagine what I'm going to be like in a year and a half if this happens with football? Josh, since you came out, other footballers have followed. We've had... Jake Daniels, recently Czech international, Jacob Yankto. How does that make you feel? Great. And that's the purpose of why I did what I did. Because in 10, 15 years time, I hope there's a whole team that come out, you know, together. (laughs) So there's a reason why I've done this video and it's to make it easier for the next person and the next person and the next person until there's no story about it and it's so normal. Look, in the woman's game, no one would ever look at this and be like, oh, wow, someone came out because it's so normal in that space. So it's great to see the FIFA World Cup is coming up in Australia too to see the diverse and how it's going to be embraced and encouraged. And it's normal in the women's game. So why not make that for the men's? Have you spoken to Jacob or reached out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did speak and I congratulated him and said, I'm here for you if you need anything. And it's a very overwhelming time. So I definitely know what's going to head his way. So it's a lot to take in very quickly because it's something that you wake up the next day and your face is very familiar. In my experiences, it was great that the celebrities reached out and, and all that stuff. But the most touching thing for me is when I'm walking in the street and a mum, a dad or an uncle or a little boy or girl comes up to me and says, oh, you help, you help my mum or you help my dad come out and they said you know there's a place in this world because of your story for them in this world and they didn't think that you know they could fit in and there was a life for them what they really truly wanted to be and when I hear stuff like that it makes it all worth the hate and all the negative comments that get thrown my way online from trolls or whatever wherever it's coming from there's probably people out there listening going oh well the reason there's not more people coming out as gay and the men's game is just because there aren't very many gay players like that's the reason what how do you respond to something like that Okay, so the best way I could respond to that is about one in 10 find themselves homosexual or in the LGBTQ space. In a football team, there's 30 players. So 
There's definitely, I'm in communication with many, um, not only in football, but in other sports, everyone's at their own journey. And I'm extremely proud to be helping these people that aren't out yet in their own journey because I didn't trust anyone. I didn't trust a therapist. I didn't trust my family. I didn't trust a friend. So to see these people reach out and ask for my help and ask for my assistance and my experience and my story, and I hope I help them in their right way. And some are ready to come out tomorrow. Some are ready to come out in a year. Some are never wanting to come out but they want that hand, that guidance, and I'm more than happy to do that for them. And so you've got sports people who aren't out yet reaching out just for support and just looking for a bit of guidance. 100%. Yeah. There's many, many, many across the world. The thing about coming out is it's got to be right for you, you know, and it's got to be the right time. Like you said, everyone's at their own journey. Maybe there's someone listening now thinking, I want to come out, but I can't just yet. What's your advice to them? Yeah, there's no rush. You know, you do it when you're ready and don't let anyone influence you that that this is the right time or push you to come forward. It's your own journey and you take that step when you're ready. Josh, coming up to the pride round in the A-League, that must be pretty proud moment for you. <laughs> of course, yeah. Love <laughs> How that. are you feeling? Yeah, I'm excited. Um, a little bit nervous. The pride round at Adelaide United was one of the most popular Adelaide United games that we've had and it was such a big successful event that we had um, and the awareness you know just to see the same gender holding hands in the stadium and stuff like that to see that combined with my footballing world I never thought the two worlds would ever combine so <laughs> all of a sudden you're so like this is the best it ever. was <laughs> so cool but the most amazing thing was the messaging that it got across and it was a very successful day and it did pave the way for the rest of the season you know we had people at our game last couple of months that are waving rainbow flags and it was nowhere near the pride round and the pride game from last year and just to see the impact it's had on this you know a little kid is is confident to wave a rainbow flag and be who they are and come to a footballing game and be proud and it's really nice to see that and to see that it's happened through my story and Adelaide United support has been phenomenal and the A-Leagues together coming together and getting around this has really helped not only me but there's so many others in the community that this is helping. But you said you're a bit nervous as well what makes yeah. you nervous? I would say the nervous thing for me is that you know when we played Melbourne Victory um, last season after me coming out I did cop a lot of verbal abuse and it was the first time, you know, face to face that I copped, yeah, a, a lot of hate and um, the crowd was booing at me and, um, yeah, said a lot of homophobic stuff. Um, How did that feel at the time? Like you've just been through this huge process of coming out. Um, you've got a lot of support, but then that happens. Yeah, it made it real. And I knew taking this step, there's definitely going to be this thrown my way, you know, being the first in the world to come out in the footballing space. It was definitely something that I was preparing myself for and you know is it acceptable no it's not definitely not but I know that that's going to come my way in order to make the next Josh an easier space for him going through that created a pride round and created a positive space in the LGBTQ space in footballing world and taking those next steps yes that was this one step backwards but look at us now we've taken five forward in the footballing world with Melbourne victory involved and they couldn't be any happier allied team to to participate with us so I was very proud of the way Melbourne victory and Adelaide United handled themselves in that space and you know it was maybe a handful of people in the crowd at the time but um yeah you can definitely see the love I had from after that incident and, and the people from Melbourne Victory um, supporting base and reached out and said, oh, you know, that person next to me said something and I stood up and I said something, told him off that wasn't cool and stuff like that. So unfortunately being the first, this is what we're going to experience because it's never happened before in the footballing world. Obviously, you're full of praise for the A-League and the stuff they're doing. What do you think of other codes? Because there are, you know, sports like NRL, for instance, that flagged a pride round, but now they've kind of backtracked a bit and the officials there are saying oh we might have like a respect round instead like it won't be specifically pride what do you make of that it's disappointing it's 2023 like grow up literally it doesn't paint anything at just helping people that are struggling in life you know you don't realize by wearing that shirt or having a pride round how many people that's going to help to come out how many people that's going to help to encourage so many people listening to this here and, and they could find themselves not out and this could be the, the step they need until coming out in their own journey. So to see people saying no or saying, why do we have to have a pride round? Why do we have to do this? Why do we have to do that? It's helping people in such a positive way and it's making the world better. So why not? And as some of these people that are reaching out to you who might be not out yet, are they in some of these sports that 
don't have a big pride movement yet who are saying, oh, we're not ready for it yet? Yeah, there's definitely sports where there are people that are waiting to come out and they don't have that space where it's friendly or they feel like they can't continue their sport after coming out. So yeah, it's definitely around the world. It's definitely there. Um, it's something that, you know, my story is not going to fix everything, but I hope it takes, it uh, gives that one step for someone to say, oh, okay, maybe we can have a pride round. Oh, wait, maybe we can have a rainbow flag on our shirt or maybe we can do this or maybe that planting the scene in people's head to realize that there's a lot more people going through it, you know? And these people saying, oh, well, let's wait a few years, let's wait this, let's take that. How do you know it's not your brother or sister that are waiting, that are in the closet or that are not feeling like this world is a place for them because they don't find themselves straight or, or they don't fit in? So people got to be careful because it could be your colleague or it could be someone really close to you in your family that is going through this. And seeing that people are respectful and embracing it is only going to make these people's lives better. Josh, there's definitely somebody listening to you right now who is struggling and really maybe at a crossroads in their life or just needing a bit of advice and they're wanting to live their life like you. They're wanting to be open. They want to be able to fully express themselves, but they're scared. What do you tell them? Look, I was in that position. That's exactly where I was. And it's not too long ago. It was only a year and a half for me. So you're okay. You'll get there. You'll be there. You are the only person that's going to change it. I had so much fear as well, but it's the best thing I did in my life. And now I can live every day as long as I wanted out. There was times where I wanted the day to be over. You know, I would go to training. I would go straight home and I want the day to be over because I don't want to go outside. I don't want to live my life. This is, this is horrible. Like it's not the person I wanted to be. So if you're finding yourselves in those shoes, when you're ready and when you feel like you, you can take that next step and come out, it is the best thing you ever do in your life. It closes this book and opens up a world that you never thought would exist. So um, you've got plenty of things to look forward to and, and um, just take that next step when you're ready and you will never regret it. You can tell on your face that it's, <laughs> it's like a next chapter, right? It's kind of like a whole new book. I've watched so many interviews with you and you've done a lot of interviews <laughs> over the past year, like so many. And in every interview, you're smiling and you're so happy. And I thought, maybe this is the interview I'm going to break him. That he's going to really, <laughs> that he's going to really just be really upset and grumpy and depressed and all the rest of it. But that's not Josh Cavallo. You're such a happy guy. And you got this message that you want to share with the world. Josh, thank you so much for your time. Good luck in the pride round. Good luck in your career, but also good luck in your life. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.